Welcome to the first video of a new series about courses at ETH. In this series, I will share my personal experience and the experience of other students taking courses at ETH Zurich so that hopefully you get a better idea of what courses are right for you. If you're not a student at ETH yet, this is also a great chance for you to learn more about what courses are taught in the masters and how these courses are being taught. So we're starting the series with a course called Programming for Robotics, or ROS. Most people refer to it as ROS because it's shorter and because the thing that's being taught is exactly that, the Robot Operating System, or ROS, in short. If you've watched any of my recent videos, you'll know that in this year's edition of the ROS course, I was actually a teaching assistant, I wasn't a student, and I actually haven't taken the ROS course myself. But as a teaching assistant, I have a very good insight on how the course is structured, how it's taught, and how it's graded. And if that's not enough for you, at the end of the video, I also have interviews with students that took the course this year about their experience. So before hearing what students have to say about the course, let's first talk about how the course works, starting with the logistics. The ROS course is an intensive two week course at the start of the spring semester, and it's worth only one credit. In these two weeks, you can basically go from not knowing what ROS is to being able to write your own ROS packages and launch files and writing your own C++ nodes from scratch. This is done by means of five lectures and five exercises. On the day of each lecture, you will be graded on the uh, exercise of the previous day, and you'll of course be lectured on the material that will be relevant for the next exercise and you'll also be introduced to this next exercise and you can even start working on the exercise and get support from the TAs. So it's like grading of the last exercise, lecture, intro to the next exercise, work on the next exercise. If you want to attend all the lectures in person as well as getting support for the exercises, then you can expect to spend about four to five hours in the lecture hall at each day of lecture. So five times four to five hours would be the total commitment for the course. But if you are new to ROS, C++ or Linux, you might struggle a lot more to catch up with the material and you'll probably have to spend uh, even more time at home trying to finish the exercises. In the last day of the course, there's also a special lecture, which is a case study done by Anibotics. So Anibotics is a spin-off from ETH where they develop a legged robot for industry automation. And in this case study lecture, they talk about how they use ROS in their systems in a real world industrial environment. I've left a link in the description of the video to the course website where you can find slides of the course, the exercise files, and you can also find a link to the YouTube series, which consists of lecture recordings of past years taught by no other than Peter Frankhauser, who is the CEO and co-founder of Antibiotics. So regardless of whether you're an ETH student or not, you can take this course at home. The added benefit of uh, taking this course at ETH in person is that you get to uh, get help from TAs, you get to interact with other students and work together, and you actually get a credit for the course. But even if you're planning to take the course, I think it's a good idea to check it out beforehand so that you don't have to struggle or stress too much in the two weeks of the course. Let's talk about the teaching method of this course. So as I've previously alluded to, there's two main teaching methods. The first is lectures. And here there's not really much to say. It's quite standard. Um, you go to a lecture hall, which is quite small because the course is limited participation, so it's a relatively small group of students. Uh, and these lectures are usually taught by one or two PhDs of the robotic systems lab. But the thing that makes this course stand out and really effective, in my opinion, are the exercises. And this is also the favorite part of the course for most students. So in these exercises, you have to download some boilerplate code from the course website or from Moodle. And uh, from there, you have to take the skeleton code that has been provided and add some functionality on top. Uh, and usually all the exercises are based around the SMB simulation, they call it, uh, which allows you to simulate this super mega robot of the robotic systems lab. The difficulty of the tasks increases as the course progresses. So at first, you're really getting familiar with uh, all the basic tools of ROS, like Arvis and the Catkin tools command line, um, being able to 
publish to topics through the command line and check the status of nodes and topics through the command line. Um, but as the course progresses, you start getting into uh, receiving sensor information and actually controlling the robot to do uh, somewhat of an autonomous end-to-end um, -end task. So in this year's edition and all the past editions, um, the operating system that you had to use for this course was Ubuntu, and that's because of compatibility with ROS. And most students use a virtual machine for this because they're new to using Ubuntu and they don't want to do a partition of their uh, computer. And also because uh, by using a virtual machine you can use one of the pre-built images that the teaching assistants provide which come with all the dependencies installed. Some students though had different architectures, so some students had macOS uh, with Intel or Apple Silicon and they had to use slightly different uh, virtual machines and other students had used Ubuntu before and they had a dual boot so a native installation of the Ubuntu operating system and you could really see that there they had uh, better performance and they ran into less uh, issues. So grading is quite simple for the course 50% of the grade comes from the exercises and all the exercises all the five exercises are weighed equally um, and then the other 50% comes from the uh, multiple choice exam. So for grading the exercises, you basically put your hand up, then a TA or a PhD teaching the course is gonna come and sit next to you and you're gonna answer some questions related to the exercise and you're also gonna show the correct execution of your code that actually solves the task. Grading of the exam is super straightforward. It's a multiple choice and short answer exam, so it's, yeah, I don't really need to add much to that. So now that you have a good idea of how the course works, I'll let some of the students of this edition answer some of the questions that I asked them. Hello, my name is Aurel Appius. I'm currently studying mechanical engineering in the last semester. I'm doing my master's degree in robotic systems and control, and this is my second semester. Hi, I am doing my master's in information technology and electrical engineering, and I am in uh, systems and control track. Hi, I'm a master's student in uh, robotics uh, systems and control. Hello. I am a master student in robotics, system and control, currently on my second semester. I'm in my third year of my bachelor's program in mechanical engineering. Uh, I'm in the second semester of the robotic systems and controls program. The most important skill that I learned in this course is the visualization with Arvis, which uh, is super useful if you have a complex system that you need to see what's going on. Integrating some different parts of uh, sensors and codes and all this communication in between. Integrate different parts into a whole working project and also testing them one at a time so that I can uh, easily understand where the problem is and uh, fix it before uh, uh, running the whole project because it becomes uh, harder to um, distinguish the errors uh, when you write the whole um, code and like it, it becomes messy and hard to understand. I actually uh, had a class in bachelor's about C++ but I'm, then I didn't use it at all so yeah like learning C++ was also a skill that I learned during this course. I didn't have any idea about uh, uh, how ROS worked uh, and also I didn't really know C++ uh, so that's what I've learned uh, in this course. The developing Linux, setting up my working workspace, uh, writing in C++ and uh, ultimately working with ROS. Uh, one thing that I would like to, to already knew before and saying to myself uh, before doing this course would to have some familiarity with Linux and uh, had uh, a basic intro in C++. So I learned throughout this course um, how to set up like the basics of ROS but very properly and also how to like manually install all the different packages and uh, solve some issues that I had um, on that journey. And my tip to my past self would be that to be very, very patient with everything. I've worked with Arduinos before and the Arduinos, the, the sensor, the Arduino goes and asks the sensor for data and then the sensor gives the data. Unlike ROS where uh, the sensor is publishing data onto the mainstream and uh, whoever needs it picks it up and does 
makes decisions or uh, makes changes in the system, so on, so on. And also for motors or any other components it's created, it, it, it's taking commands and feeding commands. Um, so that seems like a whole new architecture that I've not been used to. I will create a visualization interface for the focus project that we're currently working on to better visualize the data that um, is coming in from the system. I'm pretty sure that I will use it uh, during my semester project, so I'm pretty sure it will be very useful. I also think I will be using that uh, for a job like uh, where I will start working uh, because uh, I guess uh, companies are starting using ROS a lot in the robotics field. So I'm basically a perception member of the IMZ Racing driverless um, formula team of uh, ETH Zurich. So for uh, actually setting up our perception pipeline we will definitely going to need ROS uh, to communicate between the different uh, light, all the sensors, perception sensors we're going to use and uh, ultimately uh, pass down to the estimation module uh, uh, localization information that it's, it's super important for them. I'll be using ROS in my focus project. Um, we are currently developing a guided recovery system for a rocket and we're using ROS um, to actually um, let the different nodes, so we have one node for a controller, one for state estimation, etc. And ROS is kind of handling that inter communication in between, which makes it a lot more easier for us. So my favorite part of the course was the exercises. I learned the most there. I mean, I'm gonna, also going to like keep the project because maybe I can use these files in a later stage. And my least favorite part was probably the exam. <laughs> <laughs> the exam was super stressful and a lot of questions. And um, I also don't really like multiple choice exams because they don't really question all of your knowledge. And yeah, that's why I don't like it. My favorite part about the course is the projects because you directly apply what you learn in the lecture, in the exercises. And my least favorite will be setting up all this virtual environment, all these packages, because it can be troublesome sometimes. My favorite part was the exercises because uh, we get to apply the skill knowledge that we learned right away after so that uh, we can apply and learn it better. Uh, the least favorite part was like setting up the virtual machine and using it because uh, even though I increased like the RAM and the memory, it was very slow <laughs> because I think my computer doesn't have a lot of memory. <laughs> yeah. So it was uh, hard to use it sometimes. So I really liked the fact that uh, uh, during every lecture we had a programming exercise to do uh, because that's really helpful to understand the theory behind uh, uh, ROS. Uh, however, the fact that this course is an intensive course uh, maybe put uh, a little bit too much pressure on the fact that we had to deliver every two days uh, an exercise and uh, also the four hours lectures every time uh, were a lot. Uh, best thing of the course uh, is that it's very hands-on, very super practical. Uh, TAs are very helpful and they are all around you to, to help you. Uh, worst thing of the course probably was the exam the choice exam, uh, the time was a bit tight. Uh, so, yeah. so my favorite part of the course was the uh, case study presented about antibiotics and their animal and how they use uh, uh, ROS in a real life application kind of. Uh, my least favorite part was probably all the issues that I experienced with my virtual machine but uh, eventually it all worked out. My favorite part of the course was that uh, the two people from Anybiotics came over and discussed about how this is implemented in the robot, uh, the animal, and uh, the seeing that what we've studied has so much impact on uh, robotics research and is widely used by all teams everywhere. Yeah. If you're interested in how you can become a teaching assistant at ETH for a course like this one, then you might be interested in a whole separate video that I made about teaching at ETH, which you can find over here. If you want to see more videos in these series, then please hit that like button so that I get encouragement to do so. And if you're new in this channel and want to see more content from me, then now is the perfect time to subscribe and join an awesome community of people. Alright, see you in the next one. Bye bye.